So at the start of our Northern Territory trip, we're just here at Simpsons Gap. We just spent a week at Fink, watching the race and everything. Really good time. Another three weeks on the road. Van in the truck. Feeling old now. Caravan life. <laughs> Bloody good butt. You alright? Come on. <laughs> You're as bad as your Uncle Dooker. What are you doing? <laughs> My leg's cramping. <laughs> I can't walk. So we're just coming into Port Augusta, come down the back side of the mountains, South Australia. So there's uh, four of us, so we've got Trev and his cross track, got my parents and their Ram 2500, they've got a hired van that they've hired because they're waiting for their new one to come. My truck, yeah, new van that we've been doing up, and Tony, he's in his Jeep and his Icon trailer, He's <laughs> he kept going. Uh, just to keep ahead of us because he has to go up a little bit slower than us but um yeah I've actually done a few mods to the truck took all the drawers out and I'm actually preferring this setup being all open now throwing bags and stuff in here because I have the extra storage now in the van don't necessarily need all that all those drawers and stuff in here I've moved uh, my fire pit and everything to the, the rear trundle on the mitts setup so I moved all that into here all my recovery gear is in this one toolbox on the side and now I have all this space to throw backpacks and bags, have my camera gear just chilling here so I can jump out quick and get some footage if need be. Starlink is going sweet, I'll give you a quick gaze of that. Alright, so we just uh, camped at Woomera last night so we're just checking out the, uh, the planes and the rockets that are just here. Pretty, uh, pretty badass. Yeah, it looks like that, eh? Sea slug. Control system. Oh. That, big, that big sucker there. This one over here. That big one there. I'm into this sort of stuff. I love SpaceX and rockets and missiles and military stuff. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of effort just to make something go boom. Just pulled in the Cooper Petey. Opal City. So just about to cruise down, go and get some fuel and uh, go and pitch up at the caravan park and then keep heading north tomorrow up towards Alice, get up to Fink and then spend the rest of our trip up in the Northern Territory for the next four weeks. So the past few days have been pretty hectic, just macking flat out from New South Wales. Uh, up into the Northern Territory, but truck's going good, van's going good, suspension on the van is absolutely sick. The new levels, remote res shocks, been playing with them. But yeah, Cooper Petey. <laughs>
got a me and Lala are in the in the media crater. We're just talking about the just the impact. Well, I think there's there's I think there's four four that actually hit here, so we're actually in it right now. Do a bit of a pan around. So there's all shrubs and stuff growing in here. But the power of this thing when it come from space, Jesus Christ. This would have been car boom. I'm gonna go and have a look at the other ones now. I like this stuff, I like space and all this sort of space and whatnot and meteorites and rockets and I'm into that sort of stuff. It's pretty pretty sick I reckon. Just kind of more so of the unknown of like what's actually out there and all the rest of it and we don't actually know where we are and <laughs> it's just, my head just goes sitting out there last night looking at all the stars. Got some pretty sweet pictures of the truck I'll put up now that Trev took for me. He's a madman on the camera. I need a better camera. Trev was schooling me last night on taking photos of the stars. So we've got another smaller crater here. Here comes the chopper. So we've got another crater here. Another one here, this is the water crater. So this one actually holds water, must have more of a clay base to it. And you got this one and then there's two that hit over here. Just imagine the power of that. Boom, Trev! <laughs> But like this one holding water, just bring all the birds in and there's dingoes around here too and life. Yeah. Water, life source of the desert. All right, great impact. Meteorites split into several pieces as it sped through the atmosphere. The four largest pieces excavated the craters beside you. Each was only about the size of a 200 litre fuel drum. <laughs> so imagine the impact. Me and Trevor were just talking about like what, how big was the meteor when it smacked in and made that. So it was about 200 litre fuel drum. So it's out of the, that's like a 44 gallon drum, yeah, 205 litres. So if you sat a 44 down in there, that's the hole it makes. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, some, some tannerite in that one. Hey chicken. Yeah. So we left Alice, went to the canyon, oh, yeah. we left Fink, well the Fink track at Alice where we camped up, about 30k mark down the track, yeah. went to the canyon, yeah. uh, stayed out there the night and then we come back and then last night we went to the meteorite craters, what's the place we're heading to today? Curtin Spring Station. Curtin Spring Station we're going to today. And I just did a Starlink test on the flat mount. 91 megabits a second. So that's pr pretty good. Consider we're doing moving, doing 100. Pretty happy with that. Hello, good morning. Uh, day two here at Ayers Rock Campground. So yesterday afternoon we went and looked at uh, Ayers Rock. It's pretty cool. Yesterday afternoon, just hanging out, having some jats with a bit of dip and some wine so coffee time so i'm going to show you how i make my coffee so this is the upright pantry from mitts so i've got uh, dog and gun coffee up here that's the honey that i make on my farm just tea bags and different bits of peas these things i got from uh coles it's pretty cool so they just fit everything in there so Got the old uh, jet boil and we just got some bottles of water. So this is how I make my coffee. These things are easy as they heat water really fast. The coffee things don't actually fit, so still you misses his hair tie and just uh 
<laughs> retain it on there like that. Fits up there good now. It's good stuff. Check out crystallized, it's gone. This is honey we make on our farm. So it's pretty pretty dark. Honey. o'clock just going out to the olgas check them out i haven't been here since i was like 11 or 12 so it's been a long time heaps of stuff up here has kind of changed with the resorts and things and let's go check out the olgas and see if we can't get lost Truck's rolling in. I don't know who old man is, but he's got an F truck, so he's, he's probably a cool bloke. <laughs> F truck. F truck. F truck. Don't see no Chevys out here. <laughs> coming here and the uh it was all foggy and raining and because i remember it was raining at uluru all the waterfalls coming down off the sides of it but it was just real eerie as you'd walk up into the valley here you couldn't really see sort of 20 30 meters in front of you it's pretty cool Trying to make fun of me. Backfired. Okay, so the Savo, we're gonna go on some segways around the around Uluru. Look at me, helmet. Right, oh, no, we're segwaying around the rock. <laughs> I've got your little man, your man purse with the water in it. What are you laughing at? Just set up camp here at uh, Kings Canyon Caravan Park. So it's a pretty cool little spot. Canyon's all out there, as you can see. But I'm gonna make some uh, adjustments to the level suspension because once we leave here, we're heading to Mount Dare. So I'm gonna do some clickers on the suspension and I wanna try and firm it up. I'm gonna go right up to uh, eight and see what sort of difference that makes. I've found that the best, around five to four has usually been about the best. So we'll just wind these, wind these up. I'm gonna go and check out the canyon this morning on the helicopter.
We're gonna walk it. You ready? <laughs> Get ready, children. I'm not ready. Yep. We're gonna walk it now. So there's three walks you can do. You can do the big rim walk, the creek walk, or you can just walk up to the gorge. We're just gonna do the walk up to the gorge and then do the creek walk. The big walk's like four hours, so and I ain't feeling that today. Hey guys, so I finally got the hoodies coming back in stock. It's taken me a few months to get a hold of these things. So these are the, like a heavy ash gray hoodie. Everyone that's bought one absolutely loves it and has been wearing the hell out of them. They're a nice, warm, thick hoodie. They got uh, like a fleece on the inside, so super warm for winter. We got the uh, logo, big F Tech logo on the back. We got the logo on the front. Design build explore down the sleeve. So yeah, jump over, I click the link now before they sell out again, because I sold the whole last run that I did. So click the link. Okay, our last one here at Kings Canyon. So Kings Canyon Caravan Park is pretty sick. They've done heaps of work here, heaps of upgrades. Everything's like rocked and everything. And then each site has its own like dust pad and, and whatnot. Yesterday we went up to the canyon. There's like three or four different hikes you can do. You can do one that goes over one or two days. So we did the helicopter and then we did just the um, I think it was like a two hour hike up to the top, look down into the canyon and then come back down again. But pub feeds here are epic too. They're pretty pretty sick. So it's pretty good. Uh, we actually went to the pub both, <laughs> both nights we were staying here. So just packing up the truck now, we're gonna have a coffee and now we're gonna head off to Mount Dare. And this uh, weather, we're a bit concerned that it may be wet. On the drive down because we got um we got pumped here last night just continuous rain all night so we'll see what happens hopefully it's not too bad but yeah let's go make a coffee and see what today's gonna hold for us right i don't have the caravan tip so i've just connect disconnected my water that's going to the caravan uh, most people have these blue water hoses um now you're gonna try and get the water out of this before you put it back in your bag and put it back in the in the caravan. So what I do is basically leave it coiled like this, connected to your tap, or you have it connected to your van like that, and then basically just lift lift each section of it like this, and then go to the next section, and you'll see that the water the water that's in it, if we lift it up, will drain out. We're not trying to drag it all across the ground, trying to get everything to come out of it. So, caravan tip. Alright, so we're about to get on that road over there, going to Fink. 
So I'm going to make some more adjustments to the caravan. I, I notched them right up to seven. Uh, I took them right up to seven on the highway. I'm feeling like about about five or six is perfect for the highway. But I'm going to um, going to swap them over now. I'm going to go back down to about three or four on the clickers and make them a bit softer, just so they're going to handle these bumps a bit better on this. Uh, now that we're going on some dirt roads again today, so we'll knock these things down and go from there. Okay, all adjusted back down to five on the compression. So the back ones aren't too bad. I suppose if you had just a single axle trailer, it'd probably be all right, but because I've got the rear reservoirs back here, they're pretty easy to adjust where I mounted them. But it's just when you've got this front axle, if you've got a dual axle trailer, as you can see the reservoirs the remote, the remote res clickers are like they're up underneath the back of the chassis. The remote res clickers are up under the back of the chassis there. So it'd be good if these hoses just there actually were longer to run across the front and then potentially have them mounted up here somewhere. But I just couldn't get them to reach that far. So it'd be good if Lovells had a kit that did... Um, Obviously, if you just had a single axle, you'd be fine because you just run them off to the side at the back there like I have. But if you've got a dual axle trailer, it'd be good if those, if you could option for a longer line, which would allow you to have the the resis up here somewhere easily adjustable because I have to, I have to get underneath there and, um, and click them each time I want to do it. But once you get them to a, a point where you like it, it's probably not so bad. So I suppose put them in at five is probably where I'm going to leave them permanently I don't think I'll be changing them after this just been going through right through the range from zero all the way up to eight and then back through again and I think I think about five uh, five or six is where I'm going to leave them permanently so you still there mate? what's up Lala? when were you last time? what was that? two years ago Heaps of Garys on this side, isn't there? Have you dropped your tyres down or not? No, not yet. Okay, yeah. See how it goes. Yeah. No, if it's, if, it, if it's shit, then I'll drop mine down a bit. Look at this weapon. <laughs> Probably the only Jeep, Jeep driver we're friends with, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love your tone corrugated as all hell so we're going to drop some pressure down all right so your first adjustment on corrugated roads like this should always be your tires first so i did the shocks we come around the corner and it was just bad so gonna go down to 30 psi on the truck do the same on the van again i've got these little camp boss deflators these things are sick so you can see the corrugations just here so they're pretty, pretty bad. I've seen a lot worse, but they're pretty bad. So we'll drop the Toyos down on the caravan. Not, not very much fun, but it's part of driving out here. So yeah, do your tyres first. If you do have adjustable shocks, then adjust your shocks. I just did it out there back on the road because it was easier to me get underneath there rather than laying in the dirt. What are you going down to? About 35 on these. Yeah, I'm going to get down to 30 on me all around. Yeah, 30 on the, 30 on the boat. Yeah. Yep. Alright, see how we go. We're heading them out there right now. Dropping the tyre pressures makes a massive difference. Still rough going, but so we're just about 50 k's from Mount Dare. But just playing with the suspension on the caravan, I can't really do too much to the truck suspension because I don't have adjustability on the truck. But the truck, we're only just saying earlier that it doesn't even feel like we're, we're towing anything. 
the suspension on the just the truck and the caravan has just been working so well together it just feels like we're just driving the truck you can't even feel the van behind the behind the truck at all so and the truck just the truck and the caravan together everything's working perfectly it's not like the back's too heavy or the front's too heavy or we're bottoming out we've hit some pretty large holes and stuff along this road I'll always spend that bit extra on suspension if I uh, can manage to make it work and it just makes the ride tenfold better and you definitely do notice that you you, you get what you pay for with suspension and yeah I'm pretty happy with the Fox stuff in the F truck and the level stuff that's in the caravan I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that again 5000 k's we've done with the the trailer now with that suspension and it's just all working perfectly you can probably see how much the truck's moving around on this road and there's no forward and back jerking of the caravan just nothing it's just smooth as we've seen some photos of Mount Dare from a couple of weeks ago and it was an absolute slosh fest and she looks still a bit wet right now yep she's a bit greasy still can uh, only imagine how wet Mount Dare was a couple of weeks ago. Should take the truck like that to the Sydney 4x4 show. All red and teed up. In front of the van got peppered. I need to uh, get a different hitch just here and lift the rock tamers up so they sit about this high like get a different hitch and then have another section that comes up here and just slide that on so that way the rock tamers sit up higher to stop that happening. <laughs> Probably see us tomorrow at Deliazzi. few weeks it would have been so friggin' muddy here with the caravan set up, Trev and Tone. But if you're coming through the Simo or you're going past Mount Dare, it's definitely worth stopping in here and going for a bit of a swim. It's pretty quiet here today, it's probably only about oh, half a dozen campers here today. So, But if you watch my Northern Territory trip or the Simpson trip, from a couple of years ago. The place hasn't changed, pretty much the same. We camped here last time through here. So, already been for a swim. Probably go back down again again this afternoon. Might go and check on Starlink and see how that's going. I don't have to set it up every time we get to camp. It's just, it's always on the truck. So just as soon as we stop, it's just got bang, it's got the sky ready to go and yeah, there's no messing around, plugging things in and running cables and everything back into the caravan. And basically the truck just admits Wi-Fi now, just whenever you're around it. So my camp's probably the coolest camp and Trev and Tone and them have all been, uh, yeah, hanging out around my my truck. <laughs> of a morning, we're all having our coffee, we're all standing around the truck and uh, they're doing a bit of work and stuff remotely, so kind of helps them out too. But yeah, it's working good. Pretty cool sunset.
Trev's fantastic photography. I'll put up a pretty sick shot that he got of my truck in the stars the other night. We were fiddling around for about an hour. We're having some fun, but but is that Mars? Yeah, I think so. Mars and the Moon, we think. Did you score? No. <laughs> the the dingo's coming to get me, or no? Fire's ripping. Good afternoon. Nice. Good Arvo. Good morning. Just went for a swim down in the hot springs. Nice early morning sunrise. It's friggin' awesome down there, but the fish the fish down there are really bad this year. They weren't like they were when we were here a couple of years ago. There was no fish there. But the fish are just like all over you down there at the moment so pretty pretty hectic so yeah time for a coffee and make some breakfast and then just gonna hang out here for the day and then we'll be going to Uden Data tomorrow Alright so we're just going past the ruins after uh, Dalhousie corrugation to freaking off their head heading towards Hamilton down to Mount Sarah and then to Udnadatta Roadhouse got the, got the got the tires down to 30 psi on the truck and the caravan but these some of these corrugations are pretty bad uh, we're getting into more, uh, going through that rep, that rocky stuff, getting into some more sand now. So it's uh, driving's a little bit, a little bit better. We're just at this uh, steep drop here in the painted desert. Just gonna bring the truck down. This is his driving. Where'd you go? <laughs> I should probably get in the car, she's gonna drive off without me. <laughs> This place, if you're coming past here, definitely drop into the Painted Desert. It is absolutely stunning for photos and video. It's awesome. Good job. <laughs> you can drive all the time now. <laughs>
stupid PD. Caravan park. So pretty much come out of the desert now. It's going to start raining. I'll give you a look at the sky. So Cooper Pedy's predicted to get half of their annual rainfall in the next three days. So it's pretty much just made us going back into the desert pointless because we're just gonna we'll get end up getting stuck somewhere. So unfortunately, it's probably gonna cut the trip short. So yeah. So now we're just gonna stay on the on the blacktop and, and kind of cruise back home. We we're gonna be home in a week anyway, so. We're just going to make our way slowly back home, but that's probably going to be about it for this trip. And, um, yeah, we'll have to see what we can do on the next trip. Next trip could be Tassie, so it's been a month down there. But, anyway, that's it from uh, Cooper Pedy Caribbean Park. Righto, Mac is brekkie this morning. We're, uh, it's pouring rain. All inland, everywhere we just were. Painted desert, Udnadatta up out there has been closed. So that could have ended very badly for us if we didn't hightail it yesterday and get down to Port Augusta. So at least at least to the blacktop anyway. Give you a look out the front of what it's like. So Apparently it's only supposed to last till Thursday. Uh, today's Tuesday, so it's supposed to last for two days. But Udnadat, uh, sorry, not Udnadatta. Cooper Pedy is supposed to get half their annual rainfall in the next two to three days. Uh, they're predicting like 80 mil or something. So. Mm -hmm.